Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, virtually, Parker Searfoss. Oh, hello. Hello, Parker. It's good to see you, dude. Good, good to, to have see you. you too. Good to have you on the couch, sort of. Yeah, I, I'm on the couch. I'm a little delayed. Yeah. That's, but it's good. This is what About we deal my with. Height. This is what we deal with in the quarantine times, you know? We deal with you being a little bit delayed. We deal with things being a little internet weird. Um, this is the second quarantine episode I'm recording. Parker, uh, for some context, Parker and I have known each other since we were tiny, tiny children. Yep, prepubescent, probably, mm -hmm. what, 10, 11? Yeah, sounds about right. Whenever... Uh, <laughs> iPod. Parker and I, we've known each other since middle school. Parker, it, we were riding the same school bus, and Parker, I got a, I had an iPod, one of the original ones with the scroll wheel, and Parker was sitting behind me and saw it and asked what it was. Oh, I, I asked if it played Tiny Discs specifically. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was it, that was how technology worked. And that was the moment. That was the moment we knew that uh, a couple years later we would actually start hanging out and being friends. Exactly. And, you know, we knew that we looked similar. We're basically the same person. Yep. I One do appreciate that <laughs> you took your glasses off so that way we didn't look even more similar. Um, oh, yeah. I haven't been growing this mustache out. I trimmed it up today. I shaved for you today, Parker. I shaved everything except the mustache. That's right. My skin and is you smooth. Had we looked perfect discussing, mm -hmm. you know, future Oscar winning film, future classic, you know, given the fact that there are very little Oscar movies that are going to be coming out in theaters this year. I feel like we're talking about a top contender right here. Loquisha. Yeah, dark, <laughs> <laughs> dark horse, the Loquisha. ultimate title for this movie. <laughs> so, so when I Googled it, the film, I, I will say, uh, the top two results were Loquisha, how it's spelled, and then Loquisha with like three E's. So clearly people are looking for this film and they're unsure how to spell the title. It's, I think, probably to this film's benefit that nobody knows how to spell the title of the movie if you can't find it. Yeah. We, found, we found that out on Amazon too because we watched this on Amazon Prime. So Parker and I, it, Parker's calling in from Austin, Texas, where he currently lives, and another good friend of ours and former guest on the show, Tyler Mesnerich, is uh, currently bunking with him right now. Is he is he off camera? Is he in the other part of the room? No, he actually went for a run during this. Oh, okay. Because we were unsure. He'll probably return at some point. Cool. Can't wait for Tyler to come barging in with his oh. opinions. Yep. And, his and he's trapped here. It's been going great. We've been watching these really racist movies <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the Old tiger game. king episodes oh yeah tiger king as well so we've been watching we've been watching some movies together me and parker and tyler and our other friend sean who's also been on the podcast and we decided in the most democratic fashion the thing we should do is we should have like a little netflix roulette going where one of us gets to choose whatever we're watching and so this was Tyler's pick, I think, or I think was it so, yours? Yeah. It was. We're gonna go with Tyler's pick because Tyler's the easy villain. We can paint him since he's out of the room. Yeah. Well, I was gonna suggest uh, another racist film that, out of irony, uh, What's the that? Obama Deception. Oh, that's right. You did want to watch the Obama <laughs> Deception. Parker really uh, wanted know, to I'm watch. You initially wanted to watch Loose Change. Oh, yeah. No. So in Austin, Texas, you know, the, the biggest podcaster, the biggest media guy has got to be Alex Jones. So we kind of wanted to do, you know, a hometown hero type thing. Watch his greatest hits. You know. But we couldn't get we couldn't get into it. We, uh, so no. we decided to watch Loquisha instead. And exactly. 
Boy, oh boy, did we make a giant fucking mistake. It's not good. It's so bad. This movie, uh, a 2019 independent American comedy film produced, written, and directed and starring Jeremy Savile, who plays a middle-aged, divorced white bartender who becomes a nationally syndicated radio host by impersonating a black woman. Mm, well, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> they, they say impersonating. The entire movie is painfully obvious. This is a white guy doing a black lady voice. Yeah, it, and not even a good attempt at a black lady voice. Like the no, laziest like possible Lewis. attempt. Yeah, they should remake this with Danny Day-Lewis because then I, I bet he would study the voice for four years like on a farm in isolation <laughs> and it would be <laughs> indistinguishable from you know a real person. Whereas yeah. this guy would not get like a voiceover gig in the 1950s for Warner Brothers, back when it was like cool to do racist stuff. Right. Al Jolson could do a fake black person voice better than this guy could. Oh yeah, absolutely. That, Stephen Hawking a- could do a fake black lady's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Helen uh, Keller could do a fake black lady's voice better than, than Jeremy Savile can. Yeah, now, no. there's, uh, this is, um, this is a movie. I remember seeing trailers for it. Did you ever see the trailer for the movie when it came out? Uh, I remember we have a group text thread. I mm-hmm. can't remember who sent it, but someone just sent the trailer and said, holy shit. And I watched it and I, I was waiting for like the punchline or like, you know, funny or die.com. And nope, it's just a legitimate real movie that this guy produced wrote himself. And acted, starred in. Yeah, it's just like, oh my god. Okay, I I think what we need to do is watch this trailer again because yeah. Let's I remember throw people know. when we decided to watch the movie, we thought that it was going to be like fun, bad, like The Room or Birdemic or Troll Two, and the yeah. trailer kind of leads you to believe like maybe it's going to be in that vein, if I remember correctly, but I could be remembering it totally wrong. So this is why we need to refresh both of our memories and watch, just watch the stench of actual loquitias, uh, the movie itself out of our, out of our mouths for a sec. Yeah. Like they need to, the trailer will let them understand that this is like a Hallmark movie, but you know, Hallmark movies are usually about like soldiers coming home from Iraq and, you know, falling in love again or something. Mm -hmm. It's like if someone made a racist Hallmark original movie. <laughs> let's a feel good racial supremacy video. <laughs> let's give it a watch. <laughs> you always seem to say the right thing to just the right person. What's your secret? I'm really just talking to myself. I don't charge for my advice. Well, you should because it was amazing. I Very saw jaunty this, music. I of you. you will be a hit in no time. Welcome to the Joe Show. I submitted myself to a radio station for my own show. Well, congratulations. They rejected me. Well, congratulations then. You weren't right for your own show? Jason skipped it. We need to get the money for this school. 13000 a semester? <laughs> That's who needs their own show. If I was a black woman, I'd be perfect. Uh-oh. <laughs> She's brilliant. I know. Get her in here. The quick gonna be the biggest thing in radio. But I still need my anonymity. You nervous? Very. It's not a crime. It's theater. You live with Loquisha. What's mm. Hi, Loquisha. It's free. Oh, I ain't talking to you, not the way you sound. Next caller. You go, girl. You just be good to her. If you good to yourself, you can be good to others. But don't be too good because the police will come around. <laughs> I don't understand. How so many black job. people are listening what? to this white guy this clearly do a very bad impression of a black lady a bit. And, and still yeah. think, yeah. Like the whole city has a Quisha mania. I am low Quisha officer. What was that? I think I might be a black woman trapped in a white man's body. You need to talk to Loquisha. Just because she's a woman and a That's black person do. doesn't mean that she doesn't <laughs> understand you. Is this really happening? I'm on a bridge above the river and I'm going to jump. 
But thanks for calling. Enjoy your jump. Oh my God! They showed part of that I scene. Start listening to her. Mm-hmm. Hashtag Loquisha. Ah, uh, so, so now what did that we you learn? get this is modern day birth of a nation. Yeah, <laughs> this <laughs> it's like a subtle. The white man saves the day. This is. Oh my God. I, I, I'm having flashbacks watching that trailer just of feeling like, you know, the feeling of hopelessness that sort of set in as we started to watch the movie and realize that it was just actually very bad. Oh yeah. Like if I remember someone wrote, Hey, we're five minutes in and it felt like an hour. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It's, I mean, where should we start? Should we just start with like the plot, like the movie, you know, opens up and we got Joe, the bartender, right? Mm Mm-hmm not putting a lot of effort into the whole concept. Joe, the bartender is given his bar patrons, these pep talks. Yep. He's He's like a school football coach. Like you got to get out there and make it happen for you. And shit like that. And he's kind of snarky and sarcastic, but in the very like detached way that I think he's trying to seem cooler than he actually is. Yeah, he is, his too cool attitude is the most annoying thing about the whole movie. It's like, mm-hmm. there's supposed to be stakes, right? But he's yeah. always just shrugging his shoulders like, that's life, you know? Sometimes the most life. you ever see him free- Yeah, about the tuition. Yeah. When he's like, this much money? Oh, man. He's doing a lot of face acting in this movie. He's doing a lot of, like, face yeah. and hands acting to try and prove that he's a good actor and he has some some... Some chops. He got no chops. If you think the Lo- the Loquisha voice is racist, the Loquisha faces he makes are beyond. <laughs> Even, there, there's also yeah. a moment. I know we're skipping ahead. In no, this skip the end ahead. Of the film, but Go right ahead. He's revealing to the producers that he, in fact, is Loquisha. Yes. And the way he reveals that is they're like, what are you? The producer, he's like, no. And they're like, what are you, a sound engineer? And he's like, mm-hmm. And he goes, I am Loquisha. He's double snap. He goes full into it. And, and you know what their reaction? Their reaction should have been, you're an insane man, get out of here. But their reaction was, oh, it's her. Like, holy shit. Like he just How opened the Ark imagine? of the Covenant. <laughs> Yeah, their their faces literally melt off, and all you see exposed are their skulls. Mm-hmm. They're white man skulls. Oh yeah. So that that one lady, right? He meets her in the bar, and right. she's having boyfriend issues, right? She's having boyfriend problems. And before this happens, I think it's right around this time. Before we even see him do a black lady voice, he already does an even more racist and also even more like good voice of a, of an Indian uh, 7-Eleven style store clerk. Yeah, what's so bizarre about that part is there's nuance to that. I mean, it's still racist, but it's not it's like- It's definitely a, racist. Yeah, but it's not, it's not that far. I mean, it's not like I've heard people do racist Indian accents. And like, right. If He's anything, doing- yeah, that sounds more accurate and nuanced than- his loquisha voice is the worst voice he does. Yes. The fact that this he he heard himself doing uh his version of like Hank Azaria as a poo and did not think to make a whole movie around that instead of just deciding, oh, I'm gonna make a movie around my horrible black lady impression. May is oh that is that part of the the joke of the movie? Is this movie like an alternate reality? on top of an alternate reality, like a joke on a joke where the whole premise of the movie is that he's tricked all of these people into believing that he actually does a good job of doing a black lady voice. Yeah. It's like a South Park episode where it's like, you hear the voice where it's clearly a white guy and everyone's like, wow, this black lady knows what she's talking about, but it's so obviously not a black lady. Mm -hmm. So Uh, I, Oh, sorry. sorry, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, in the trailer, <laughs> if we're going along the plot, right, he does the Indian guy voice, but he auditions, he gets rejected, and in his moment of despair, 
there is a Jerry Springer ripoff going on. So it's yeah. not even like he hears a black lady giving sage advice, like Oprah or something, you know? He sees Springer and he's like, Mm-mm, he is the fop. Like, <laughs> that's how he gets into it. That's the genesis yeah. of Loquit. And this is after he's already helped out uh, a very attractive black woman come into his bar with the boyfriend problems. And she out of nowhere is, is like, you got to submit, you got to apply to this job. I'm going to help you record. And at no point is she going to suggest, Hey, you should do a black lady voice. Of course not. Cause she's sensible. Yeah. But that's, you know what? That's the mistake from the beginning is this movie should have been over in five minutes. Because oh, you should really do this radio thing. And he goes, Oh yeah. And realize that she's hitting on him. Yeah, I've been like, hey, do you want to go back to my place? They like, fuck, and he never does any of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that it. would have solved this entire fucking movie. The entire she's showing up dressed to impress every time she hangs oh, out yeah. with him, and he oh is God. just slobby and slovenly, and he's wearing like shirts under shirts and on top of shirts, and he's got uh, he just is. This he is, looks like the. Uh, he looks like the dad that buys all the Led Zeppelin shirts from Target. <laughs> yes. It's, it's like, I'm a, I'm a cool dad. Yeah. I like rock and roll. He looks like the kind of guy who would like buy Coachella tickets for his daughter. And then only the only way she gets to go is if he gets to tag along. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly who this guy is. Joe is a monster basically. Joe is a huge, huge monster. Now, as the movie goes on, so we get through um, this opening and he decides to do the black lady voice and yep. the radio producers are totally, totally taken away and they're totally tricked. And so they're thinking, all right, she's going to, we're going to give her this slot. And Wait, because, before that, oh, sorry, go ahead. small thing. Because I feel like we're we're blazing past an awful part of this. Is he applies as himself and yes. gets rejected? Yes. And in the thing, it's minorities and stuff, and that's where he has his alt right. Like that's where the movie turns. It's this movie seems kind of normal before that, right? And then you see in his eyes him be like, "Another job I lost because of black people." When yeah. he's a forty-year-old bartender, you know, <laughs> it's not like he's <laughs> out there grinding the. Or like, you know, I have a physics degree, but it's just affirmative action is keeping me from getting tenure. Right. <laughs> like that's it's true. It's it's the true, like, this is if this is the white privilege moment. It even says in the trailer, it zooms in on the one part that it says minorities and women encouraged to apply on the little slip of paper. Yeah. And the fact that he goes back to that, and in the trailer it zooms in on that, and he's like, huh what if I was a minority and a woman, then maybe I'd get this job. And then it plays perfectly into that weird alt-right racisty hand of every white oh, yeah. dude. Who's like, Oh, well I'm just getting fucked over by, by everybody else. See, but it's it, the thing that's bizarre to me is that it's not like he goes off on a tirade. Right. And that's how they make it palatable or marketable is he sees that it's like they want a minority in something. And he's just like, Man, if only I was black. You know, he's not like, they're stealing our jobs. And this is mm -hmm. <laughs> like the regular person. It's you just know, too very. Cool he would make like a hipster racist. Mm -hmm. He's too cool for school. He's just like, exactly. he's like, listen, I don't think, I, don't th I think that maybe black people should get to have as many jobs as white people do. But, you know, whatever. It's all fine. You know, like I kind of liked when there was no line for the water fountains. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I, so after that, right? He so gets after the job. that. And, and uh, particular issue mm -hmm. now that he's gotten the job. Which is that, that he's issue. a white guy. Exactly. Yeah. Now, and <laughs> he also has ahead, no sound that. engineer. He needs to get a sound engineer who... Uh, and he, he talks to just a random black guy, one of the regulars at his bar, presumably, and lets him in on the plan. And even the black guy 
Good shout out to to wonderful stand up comic Dwayne Perkins who plays. Uh, I just want to make sure I get the character's name right here. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, that's Dwayne Perkins, dude. Shout I was to gonna Dwayne. say he and the black lady are the best actors because never once, I mean, they're on set, mm-hmm. they're doing a take. This guy is doing black voice, and. <laughs> He smiles and is shaking his head like, this is great. And it's convincing. Yeah. Like if Halliburton needs someone for a commercial, let's get Dwayne Perkins in there because <laughs> <laughs> he can have a positive reaction to anything. Yeah. You know, we should be really using more drone strikes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wow. They, he just has the best face of, you know, uh, I do think it's okay to strangle infants. <laughs> He, he like all the Oscars to him for all not the, once like yeah Dwayne Perkins is just doing great in this role of like uh, agreeing to a white guy thinking he should play a black lady uh, and yeah. he he goes in he agrees to this crazy plan and he becomes the sound engineer to the Loquisha show you're live with Loquisha live with Loquisha so you're live with Loquisha well, what's crazy, and you see it in that trailer, is that character becomes the enabler. Mm-hmm. So this dude that wrote the thing was not, I don't want to say smart enough, but gross enough to be like, well, I got to make my character not, you know, be worried about it. Right. Be worried of seeming racist. So I got to have this black guy be like, it's not illegal, man. What you're doing's fine. <laughs> right. Pretend to be black. I know they said they wanted someone black, so, you know. Well, here's the other thing too, and they they in the trailer they really make it look like the like Dwayne Perkins's character is encouraging uh, Joe to play Loquisha. There's this yeah. whole interaction when Joe is revealing the plan, where he is basically convincing Dwayne Perkins's character Mason to go along with the plan, and he says the first version of the it's not illegal, it's theater, or whatever the fuck the line is. Yeah, And then in the trailer, you only see the part where Dwayne Perkins feeds the line back to him just to, like, pump him up before his first ever broadcast. So it makes it look like he's endorsing it the entire time. That's not the case. There's this part where he's like, this seems like a bad idea, but I need I'm going to go along with this because clearly you need some help in case shit goes south. Yeah, that's what that's what it should have been was he should have tried to if I was rewriting this movie mm-hmm. to do the sound engineering and like make sure that guy never knew he wasn't a black woman. And then it's revealed in a goofy way. And, and then that guy being right. like, what the fuck, dude? And him being like, I'll pay you so much money. You don't tell anyone about this. Right. Instead, he'd he be. Be- yeah. Instead, he just becomes this guy. You've you've how many episodes of Tiger King have you seen? Uh, I've seen all of them. Okay, so he becomes basically like the Walmart manager who becomes Joe Exotic's campaign manager. And yeah, he's the just like, listen. Guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, he's, listen, he on, just... <laughs> desk at Walmart. Yeah, okay, that's right. Important. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he just becomes this movie's version of that guy where he's like, yeah, listen, you can just... I'll, I'll just tell you all the black person stuff that you need to know, and you can just adopt it. And it's just like the, the photo desk guy, like, listen, here's what being a libertarian is, Joe. And... <laughs> I wish there was a scene of... Joe hitting the mute on the mic going, what's a weave? <laughs> and then the other guy playing it quietly into his headphones and go, coming back and being like, mm, yep. It's See, this why you got to get a lace front. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff we're already making this movie better just by imagining funnier parts instead of just this. And, oh, my God. Okay. So then we I get – yeah, you're you're going to the next thing, right? Where yes. they move time. At first, it's at night, so they could just sneak in, and no one would see them. No one would know. Right. Well, Loquisha, there's a quick montage of oh, Loquisha's taking the world on fire, and it's just all these people listening to a white man do a black person's voice and going, ha, 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 "She's great. She tells it <laughs> like it is." Exactly. So they move the. Uh, the time slot 
to yes. prime time. Yep, she's got real be in a good drive time. Mm -hmm. Yep. So how are they going to do this? They're getting to a point where they need someone to be the face of Loquisha. Yes. And that's audition. So I would love if we have this is a this is a great little clip is showing the audition clip. It's Oh my it's, god, it's so it's, bad. It's so bad. And this is one of the scenes that while we were watching it, I felt very uncomfortable and gross watching this sequence happen. Yeah. And I think you Well, because it's community. Yeah. It's literally like extras who got a line, so they're not great at it. Mm -hmm. And somehow they the scene makes them come off like they're the crazy people for wanting to be Loquisha, not the guy who literally does a black voice on national radio. He's and like, then get a load of these idiots. The black guy who is also enabling the white guy to do a black lady voice. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the auditions for Loquisha. Oh, they want Loquisha? God. We give him Loquisha. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. So good to see y'all. How y'all doing? So good to be here today. Woo! 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 What's with Woo! this weird inspirational yeah! music in the background? Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Stop! Yeah! Stop! Stop! What? What's wrong? Uh, what's with all the jumping? Oh, it says she gets excited. You ain't looking for no cheerleaders. But you advertise for a loquitia type. Yeah, but she doesn't freak out. Okay, first of all, I am an artiste. And this is my interpretation of the character. Have you ever even heard the show? I don't need to hear the show to play this character. I'm going to make her my own. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Oh, no. You're alive with loquitia. See, it's funny because it's for a, coming in. A, a transgender person or a cross-dresser. That's the funny part. <laughs> Black lady boy. It's then funny because of nice. blowjobs. Oh, and look. First of all, I want to tell you how excited I was to see y'all's mm. ad. When you said you was looking There's for a question our... type, I nearly fell out of my chair because I am your girl. I live, breathe, sleep, everything, Loquisha. <laughs> if there was a Loquisha lunchbox, I would have bought it already. Woman of color. I've seen every episode in the film. of hers. That's at least good, months, right? If not more, I yep. downloaded them from the website. Theoretically, it's I good. I love them. She is my girl. Could be. I love yeah. her. She completes right. me. You know what? Definitely not. Loquisha's everything to me. When I'm on the <laughs> bus, I listen to her no. on my iPhone. When I'm working out everywhere I go, she goes. Everything I do, she is there. She is my idol. That's my Girl, you know, she is a real role model for every African. This also goes on way too long. Planet. Yeah, we Pretty can cut well. this scene off. We basically have seen everything yeah. we need to see in this. Because I remember thinking that in the first three seconds she's speaking, you're like, she's the perfect candidate. But then they make her talk for like four minutes. Right. And then at the end go, ooh, she's perfect. And so they have after this, this montage of like Loquisha meet and greets. And... They they do more showing of him uh, starting to like crack and let the Loquisha voice take over his life in like a weird so the he, mask kind of way. <laughs> yeah, not only the mask. I was thinking of another uh, Jim Carrey film, Me Myself and Irene. Where I've never seen Me Myself and Irene. Ah, uh, damn, Jay. Okay, well he has multiple personalities, so he starts to do the Jekyll and the Hyde thing. So it starts off with the original uh, lady that he meets that sets him up. Mm -hmm. They start to have sex. You know, they're on the couch. Right. It's moving there. And they're getting yes. laid. But he keeps speaking in Loquisha's voice at a certain point where he's like, mm -hmm, you want this, don't you? And yep. I've been really trying not to do the voice, but that's literally how it sounds. <laughs> it's okay. I've done the voice. Honestly, we both have better Loquisha voices than this guy does. Oh, yeah. So, so I don't, he literally I don't is, feel as bad about doing it. <laughs> well, it starts off and you think he's just fucking with her. Like he gets off on the idea of being Loquisha and she's like, stop it. And it's revealed he can't control it. Yep. Now, anytime, you know, he, like Loquisha can just come out at any given moment. Right. And, uh, and he starts to have some existential crises about dealing with this. And 
He, for some reason, decides to deal with this on the air. And we have yeah. this. Well, we, <laughs> before that, remember, it's in the trailer. He gets pulled over by a police officer. Uh-huh. And can't stop it. And the cop's like, are you okay? And the cop is clearly like, you're losing your mind. Right. Because he keeps switching it between voices. And then he confesses to the police officer, I am Loquisha. And it just goes to show how the police react to different races. Yeah. That's what I'm when saying. it's a white guy, <laughs> clearly we're going to be okay, even if you're doing a weird racist voice to a black cop. As long as you're a white He's, guy, you're not going to get shot by that cop. He's literally having a mental breakdown. He's going, no, everything's okay, officer. Mm-mm, it's not okay. <laughs> He's having a, a breakdown, and the cop's like, all right, you go on, uh, go on ahead, get home. Listen, get home. I know you've had a, you've had a little bit to drink, and I would like you to, to uh, be safe. So then so. he goes, then he talks to his mom, and his mom's like, "You got to talk about it with Loquisha. That's what you got to do." It's like in Watchmen or that thing, right? About uh, you know, a guy goes to a therapist. Mm-hmm. And the therapist says, "Oh, you're down and depressed. You got to go see Palucci or whatever, the right. famous clown." He- lifts everyone's spirits and it's like, but doctor, I am Pellucci. Yes. It's literally that, but Loquisha. Oh my God. That's the most highbrow interpretation of anything related to this movie possible. Oh, but this smug motherfucker, you know, that's what he meant. But doctor, as he was type, <laughs> but doctor, I yeah. am Loquisha. <laughs> that's impossible. Loquisha is an African American woman. What? So then he does this thing on the air. And he basically has this conversation with him and Loquisha going back and forth. And then after he saves himself and figures out how to be Loquisha and himself, we get one of the absolute best line sequences of the entire movie. Do we uh, have it pulled up? I think we have, we do we have it pulled up. Anthony's getting it pulled up right now. Shout out to shout out to Anthony in the booth. The bet, because you think that's the craziest part of this scene. Mm-hmm. You think him literally talking to himself, going like, "I don't know, my name's Joe. I'm just really depressed. What are you depressed about?" He, he's doing an interpretation or whatever, and then you're like, "This scene ends, right?" But but now, then we cut into this. So here we go. This should be it right here. If you would have strangled me, it would have been the end of the show. I don't know. I got a feeling. Loquisha will go on without you. Let me see Loquisha to air. Oh. Our fake Loquisha. So this is the part where I think... Yep. Hey, I know you just talked First yourself off the ledge. You think you could do it for real this time? What's up? <laughs> you got a jumper. <laughs> well, I certainly think I can. So oh, you get my back God. The just put them through and we'll have a receiver swim. <laughs> the confidence. We got a jumper. I can Who's fucking ours? do this. Good luck. We back, and you live with Loquisha. Go ahead. I'm on a bridge above the river, and I'm going to jump. But thanks for calling. Enjoy your jump. What? You said Green you screen. Horrible green I screen. Am. I thank you for calling. I said enjoy your jump. Can't you see I need help? What I can see is somebody yeah, I can looking for some of Kill yourself. <laughs> I certainly don't want to be the last person on earth to let you down, so I think you should jump. That way, you get a whole bunch of attention. And if you commit suicide on my show, shh, I'm going to get national coverage. I'm going to be famous. So it's in my best interest that you plunge your death right now. So go ahead, Doris. Make everybody happy. Oh, my happy. God. Do what okay. you got to do. We can, we can cut. We can stop there. Okay, we don't yeah. need to see anymore. <laughs> Flashbacks. Cause that is amazing, though, that he's like, you think you can handle this? <laughs> oh, I got this. And the first thing he's like, okay, kill yourself. <laughs> fucking do it and he uh, and he oh my god and then they have then he has this moment where he's like oh maybe i shouldn't have told her to kill herself and then he, she's like you haven't been to paris oh god you know yeah. what you should do is go on vacation to paris yeah the the idea being if you're gonna kill yourself just blow all your money in paris and then kill yourself yeah jump off the eiffel tower which is actual dialogue that happens in this movie by the way yeah. So then yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he pulls it off. She doesn't jump. Oh, yeah. Because, no, you forget. 
she goes, okay, I'm going to go now. And they're <laughs> real tense. And you go, are you going to Paris? Are you going to jump? And she goes, I'm going to go to Paris. And then his reaction is, yeah. Yep. I saved her. I did it. And this is the I'm moment. I'm the white I- hero we deserve. Yeah. And I think in the text thread, we said this is the moment where everybody claps in the theater and it only happened the one time that this actually got screened in a movie theater. Oh, yeah. And never again. Never again. Uh, and, so he has to stop a suicide to make mm-hmm. the, the Quisha thing work. When really, if he was just a, talking in his regular voice, he could have made all those same points. Right. He could have, 100%. The only reason that this happens is because he's in the Loquisha voice. And then we get another montage where they're like, Loquisha saved a lady from suicide. Oh, yeah. It's like a news montage where they get probably real, like, local news people in Cleveland to be like, Loquisha, famous radio host, is a hero. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. And then this is where the movie really starts to fall apart. Like, for a lot of the movie, it's a really shitty plot, but it's still got, like, a basic semblance of a plot and an order, and he's, like, trying to make money to keep his kid in school. And then he just complete. at this point, this is where everything goes off the rails. He decides to quit being on the show. Um, he... Well, no, that's not how it happens. So, oh, yeah. What's the order of it? I forget. You, you've got your notes a little bit so, more laid out. After that, there's a huge you know, thing, uh, press about Loquisha. Mm-hmm. And he's checking his email. And there's an email from guess who? Oprah Winfrey. That's right. Offering him to do a TV show of Loquisha on the OWN network. And he's telling his buddy about it. And the guy, the buddy's like, let's do it. And he's, Joe's like, how can we do that? You know, I'm not going to put on blackface. And they kind of suggest, hey, let's just let the lady do it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, 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 no. We're about to be nationally syndicated. What we have going on is good. Let's not get greedy. Right. Well, someone greedy, Jay. The villain who gets greedy. (laughs) The evil black woman (laughs) who is Loquisha. Fake Loquisha. The mascot. She's yeah, more of a, Loquisha. she's a faux Quisha, if you will. <laughs> faux Quisha. That's, that would have been a great line to throw in there. If you're not no. Loquisha, you're faux. Instead, we have other lines like, are you blackmailing me? No, I'm black femaling you. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Kill me. Kill me yeah. right now on the air. I will jump, and I need Loquisha to try and talk me down, and it's not going to happen. Yeah, go ahead. What, what you need? You want to commit suicide, Jay Light? Go ahead. <laughs> Shoo, you do it for ratings on my podcast? Cool, but Jay, if you're going to kill yourself, have you ever seen... <laughs> have you ever been to Bozeman, Montana? <laughs> if I was going to kill myself, I'd go check out Bozeman, Montana before I did. What's what's so nice about Bozeman? Got wide open spaces. Could clear your head. I like wide open spaces. That's a good Dixie Chicks song. I bet they play the Dixie Chicks every day there in the Waffle House. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Ugh. So he has this moment where he's he quits the show live on the air after this conversation. Uh, and he wait, basically won't blackmail him. That, yeah, she she comes wait. to blackmail him, and then he quits. And she's like, "I can still do the show. I am I am Loquisha. I can still do it." Oh my god! Yeah. Now she becomes the villain, which is uncomfortable. But the best is when she does the Loquisha show because mm-hmm. people are calling her and be like, "Hey, Loquisha, I'm having some issues." She's like, "Your husband's a fucking idiot." Yeah. <laughs> she's she just and shits she, on every right and at some at one point she's like i am god i am loquisha i am the loquisha of oz or something like that oh she goes i'm the great and powerful loquisha she, that's, that's what it is my, oh. she literally has a breakdown like you know like mm-hmm. a tyrant 
And then the, the, it all kind of wraps up where she recognizes the error of her ways, uh, of her, of her villainous black lady greed and comes back in. I just puked a little bit in my mouth saying that. And she comes back in groveling to Joe being like, please take the show back. We, you were right all along. You were the only one who can do a good black lady voice out of the two of us. Oh yeah, and that's everyone keeps going, Laquisha, you sound different. Right. Like now they're they're like, this sounds like a white man when it's actually the black lady. <laughs> you don't sound the way you used to. And then he basically comes, and we talked about this sort of at the beginning of the show, but he comes to the producers and is like, We gotta we, uh, listen, I gotta come clean. I have been Laquisha. And yeah. they they're like, Well, there's only one thing we can do, which is you have to be You have to admit it on the air, and we're going to let the people decide whether or not they want me or Loquisha. Or no one. Now, remember, he set it up to split the vote. So two of the options, he remains employed. Because either (laughs) he continues as Loquisha, he continues as Joe, or he gets fired. And if internet polls have taught me anything, 4chan would have got a hold of this, and it would have been 100% the Loquisha show forever. Right. But that's not... It's not how it happens. We still live in an ideal white man's world where he where? gets <laughs> he gets to not only be himself, but also gets to keep doing the Loquisha voice for half of the show. Yep. It's a it's a double block where he signs off of the Joe show and goes, and now, and this is his quote, let's give it up for our Nubian princess. Right. Loquisha. I would like to and see then he, if we could roll, because the the last literal, like, the last minute of this movie where this happens is truly fantastic. The sequence of events. It's, yeah, it's right before, uh, it, it should be, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, it should be it right here. Okay. He says Nubian princess before, I think. But there's a time where he does refer to her yeah. as that. I did it. Save my son. Oh, no, we got to go further I along than me. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where he's admitting his wrongs. Yeah, and they're about to take a vote. And we got to go. He not only steals a minority's job, but he gets a white man's job. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it should be right at the very, very, very end of the movie, right before the credits. Yep, right here. Okay. So he makes up with this lady. And yours, who's got just one question for you What's your problem? For mom and dad. For mom and dad. <laughs> who I'm sure love the movie. Oh, yeah. Well, 100%. You know, in that movie with, like, 80s guy, his voice. <laughs> you know, like, it's that that shows, I feel like he chose a black lady's voice. Mm-hmm. Because he feels like it blunts the racism or something, you know? <laughs> like, where it's like, I, oh, you know, everyone's got a black lady voice or something. I guess. But it's like, if he had done that. As a Chinese man, <laughs> it would have been like awful. I'm a, oh my god. Well, Parker, I I yeah. at the end of the day, I can't say that I regret watching this movie because I got to watch it with you and Sean and Tyler and all of us get to experience this horrible experience together. Yeah, but no, I, I don't regret it. Like I, I almost feel like people should watch it just because it's it's insane. It's like an idea for a movie you would have come up with in 1980 yeah, and it would have maybe flown. And now today you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, like, we didn't even talk about the producers. Oh my God. If this, yeah, the, this, the, young, <laughs> the young guy and the old guy, this father and son duo who are like, yeah, well you should have a white guy doing a black lady voice. Huh? This seems like a good idea. Well, no, they don't even realize they think it's a black lady. My favorite part is the old dad producer. The young son's like dad, it's basically like the Back to the Future thing, you know, where he's like, Dad, listen to this. Oh, and he right. Presses play. My name's Loquisha, and I'm here to. <laughs> no, it's, like, huh, it's that awful. sounds like a real black woman. Well, he's I'm, just uh, like, wow, like, immediately. I usually don't recommend people watch a lot of the movies for this that are actually bad, but if you want something that's not fun bad and you just want to, like, if this is a trying time for everybody, and if you want to believe that you can still achieve your dreams, 
then watch Lokeisha yeah. and realize that if this movie can get made, you can still do your dumb, dumb idea. Yeah. And your dumb idea is a thousand times better than this one. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's wrap things up, dude. Where, if the listeners want to to check in on you and your social media exploits, uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Uh, Fair I mean, I guess feed us on Twitter. I really don't need to blog anything. Fair enough. I'm not really in the entertainment industry. But it's okay. I, I still think you're an entertaining kind of guy. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even had you on the show, despite you being one of my best friends. Thanks, Parker, uh, Parker, you're great. Thank you. You can go follow Parker at Fear Sauce on things. He's funny. He's got some fun things to say. And uh, you can follow me at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram. Support the show on Patreon. As you know, right now, we're running our quarantine special where as long as you subscribe at any tier before the official quarantine ends, you'll get a shout out on every quarantine episode at the very beginning of the show. So yeah. join on up. It's a fun time. And that's it. Stay safe out there, guys. Parker, right. stay safe, dude. Thank you. I will. Very good. This has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. 